course, that's so much easier said than done because of all the complexities. But that's one of the things I was thinking that would be interesting use of virtualization. And so client. I think that kind of virtualization you're talking about, this is machine virtualization. Okay. And then the virtualization you kind of alluded to there mm -hmm. is application virtualization. So it, a lot of people watching this are probably familiar with SoftGrid mm -hmm. and Softricity, which is uh, a company that was Microsoft acquired a little over a year ago. Cool. And SoftGrid is part of the Microsoft Desktop Optimization Pack, and that it is uh, application mm. virtualization. So that kind of virtualization is outside of the it's, scope. Of the it's outside the scope of the hypervisor, right? That is, you've got uh, the Windows kernel, mm -hmm. so kernel mode, and then you've got user mode here, and then this app. Uh, Office is one of the big common, commonly virtualized apps with SoftGrid is now running in uh, a bubble hmm. so that when Office makes changes to the registry, those changes go to a uh, virtual registry, just call it VR, whereas Office, another instance of Office might be running here not inside of SoftGrid, and when it makes changes to the registry, it goes to the real registry. And this virtual registry is stored off in some well-known place from for SoftGrid's point of view. So you can basically take this and lift it off the machine and mm. put it on another machine. And now Office, what its view of the registry is, is this, nice. basically, and on top of this. But all of the important stuff for Office is here. So all your settings are in there, Office's installation configurations all in that virtual registry and also virtual file system. Cool. And uh, all the changes that you make when you're interacting with this mm -hmm. are isolated into this blob right here. So this this virtualization has a lot of benefits that people got really excited about, mm -hmm. like the fact that it's zero touch on the client. Like like you said, Raymond Chen writes his oh. shell extension. Well, yeah. really, Raymond Chen writes his Office app. Yeah, and has no impact on the machine itself. So you can just delete this blob mm -hmm. and it's as if Office was never there. Nice. That's the, very interesting. Yeah, so uh -huh. what the, the reason though that what SoftGrid does with this virtual registry and virtual file system is it's aimed at legacy applications that don't aren't written to be virtualized. So mm -hmm. they, or not separate their state very well. So they mingle their state, their user state with their application state. They uh, also mingle their own state with the state of the machine. So Office might make changes to the state of the machine, like installing things in the program files directory and uh, making changes to the HTTP classes root, the COM mm. registration database. If we had a model where applications could can make those kinds of uh, configuration changes and do them in such a way that it's architected not to have a, an impact on the machine, or at least where we know exactly where those changes are, then we wouldn't need this virtual file system and virtual registry. Hmm. So the virtual file system and virtual reg registry are, are basically there for legacy apps to be able to contain them, hmm. make them think that they're running you know, on the bare OS, on the bare, on bare windows, sure. but really we're watching what they do and, and capture those changes so that they can be uh, not uh, I, so we know uh, we can watch the changes, know exactly where that changes are, mm -hmm. and then rip them off. Cool. And only it sees them. That's a really interesting technology. So, uh, what else should we talk about here regarding Windows uh, that we can discuss? I mean, um, you touched a little bit on MinWin, so we could, so let's let's do. I mean, MinWin is not server core; the other way right. around. So everybody get that out there. Okay, I understand that now. Good. All right. Um, and <clears throat> your definition of kernel is more than just kernel DL, kernel nt kernel dot dll. Right? Well, I, I don't know if I've got uh, d basically uh, even if I have my own definition, other people use the word, <laughs> and I've got to adapt to how other people use the word of kernel. Course. So, uh, but when I talk about kernel, really, what I typically mean is NTOS. Okay. And and the closely associated associated system service layer, which is up here in user mode, NTDLL. Cool. Um, NTDLL, dot DLL. Any, cool. In any case, um, uh, I, I gave a change call, uh, the talk that I gave at IT Tech at IT yeah. Forum, Windows Vista kernel changes. Yeah. But in the context of a talk like that, 